Why, hello everyone! I'm your lovely host, Innocent, and I'm still sick. A little bit better from yesterday, but <laughs> still not at my top peak. So instead of recording my usual what's and nots and like Mass Effect or Hustle Cat or any of those ones that I'm doing right now, I figured I'll just I'll take a break and do something that I may or may not come back to. <laughs> So today we're playing Lost Girl's Diary. I've had this in my Steam library for a while, but I just never touched it for some reason. It's free! It's, I don't know why I haven't touched it, but it, yeah, you know, just, I don't really remember what this game is about other than it happens on Christmas Day or something. And there's like seances? Maybe? I don't know. Let's just dive right in. Sounds like fun. Да что вы за пионеры, если товарища спасти не можете? Oh, there's voice acting. Russian voice acting at that. Well, some pioneers you are can't even help a comrade in need. Оно приближается. It's closing in. Снова этот кошмар. Столько времени прошло, а до сих пор снится тот лагерь. И слава, и остальные. I'm actually gonna stop voice acting for this until I actually need to. Because this is a person talking. I should be respectful. Раз за разом во сне я переживаю тот день, но не могу изменить ничего. Теперь не засну до утра. I mean, I sleep in the morning. I feel you, lady. Тоньки на записке. Помню, как она носилась по всему лагерю, выспрашивая новые страшилки. Well, I mean, scary stories are pretty cool. Если бы я знала, что эта тетрадь может спасти нас. A diary can save us? What? Среди обычных страшилок Тони написала целый рассказ. Даже меня туда засунула. Правда, под другим именем. That reminds me of something Epsilon Runner does. Actually, he was doing it earlier today. He likes doing that. Студионом январским вечером в санатории пансионате собралась пёстрая компания. That sounds like something bad is gonna happen. 10 p.m. X Hotel. Lisa, wow. 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 That's some blue hair you got. Everything is ready, girls. Come down. I'd rather read a book in my room. Your hair is really, really pink. Let's go, Olya, please. Uh, fine. Yay. Sarcastically. Looks like someone dressed up tonight. It's none of your business, Sasha. Why don't you ask Lisa why she's put on so much makeup? She always does, but you... Whatever. Go light the candles. You got it. Boss. I'll go get more candy. <laughs> Way to go, sweet tooth. Sweet tooth, that sweet character. <laughs> well, builds. Let's see. Kids are kids. Hey, Sasha, isn't that bedtime for her already? Not yet. Just let her stick around for a while. All right, girls, let's go. Ah. Last, we got company. Who's there? It's us. Who's us? It's St Stoppa and I. Open up, Vera. It's freezing out here. Vera? I've asked them to come, right? It's gonna be more fun that way. Vera! Idiot. Vera, dear, you should have warned us. Wow. I can't tell if this is a man or a woman or something in between. You're very androgynous. 
Also, the whites of your eyes are nearly your own skin color. 10 out of 10. Wow, this place is so cool! It even have a, you even have a fireplace! Damn. You're a playboy. Hi, girls. These are Sats and Siopa. We play sports together. Siopa, quit standing around and say hi. 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 Hi! It's your fault we're not getting enough room in the... There's not enough... Machine Y! <laughs> It's your fault. There's, n were there not enough rooms in the hotel for you, meatheads? Eh, no big deal. That was a paper mistake, so we're forced to go along with your group. Take your coats off, boys. Pharaoh, why did they come? Take it easy, Sasha. I'll rip their heads off if they mess up. But now the ritual won't work. How come? No boys allowed. I should have known. Come on! Think of something. <sighs> Ow. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm out of here. Oh, yeah, please stay with us. Stop sitting here, Siopa. Start a fire. Should I? Of course. Cool. Fire. I'm sorry, pardon me. Hey Seth, what kind of sports are you into? No, we do sambo. You should watch us sparing sometime. It's even more exciting than karate. Embarrassed, star, we let me introduce you to my friends. This is Lisa. My full name is Elisa Veta. But I'm used to be calling Lisa. Hi! This is Sasha, she's our class president. Don't, don't, I'm getting messages on the side, what the fuck? <sighs> no, shush, shush. This is Sasha, our class president. Don't let her looks confuse you, she's tough and friendly. There, dear, you are way too talkative tonight. Please to meet you, that's so am I. Oh, this is Ollie over there, she's quiet today. Yep. That dress fits you, Ollie, yeah? <laughs> Why do you do this? There is not a silent button for you, Tumbler! Of course it fits me, it's my dress. Okay. And that's Nastya by her. Is it your bedtime yet, Nastya? Nope, are you in love with Vera Sass? Uh, my what? <laughs> Fire started. Quit fooling around and sit down already. Sit with me, Sophia. Me and... Nay, what's going on? <laughs> what, what, is, what is this pose? What is even... We're going to summon the Queen of Spades, but we're not supposed to do that until midnight. And the Queen of Spades? Hold on, you told me you're going to tell fortunes. <laughs> Feel like telling scary stories, guys? Why not? Mm, awesome! I know, good one. Wow. I'm just gonna start. Now, how about you, Lisa? Are you ready? Always ready. <laughs> she reminds me of the, 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 the corpse party. She she reminds me of corpse party. Pigtail lady. Oh my god. Oh my god. Have you guys watched Corpse Party? It's amazing. Speaking of Corpse Party and other weird gory shit, I, for like the last three hours, have been reading Killing Stalking, and oh my god, I feel so much secondhand embarrassment from Bum. <laughs> he pains me so. But I like Sungwoo. Sungwoo is amazing. Just my type of fuck up. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm only on that, like, I I just got to chapter 9, too. I am not that- I'm like, I'm midway. I'm halfway done right now. Oh my god. <laughs> I really like Sangwoo. Sangwoo. I don't know how to pronounce his name yet. I'm bad at Korean. <laughs> anyway, let's go back to Russian. <laughs> okay. 
The story is about the Black Veil. I've already heard that one. No, 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 no. That was another one. And don't interrupt me, please. Begin. Black Bedsheet Part 2? Part 2? Part 2? Part 2. Okay, this story is about Black Veil. I heard it from a boy who heard it from a girl who was in the camp where it happened. So this story is true. There was a girl in the camp. Her name was Yana. She was tall, slim, with a braid down to her heels. Her skin was soft. The lips were red like corals. Coral red? Okay. <laughs> and her eyes so big and shining like a forest lake on a summer's day. Real knockout. The entire half of the camp boys were into her, even some of the camp leaders, but they were nothing to her. Yana only used them while they were happy to satisfy every single limb of hers. Sounds like some of the kill and socking thing I've been reading, except female. <laughs> some of the boys even fought for her. She had, been re she had been reported eventually, but the teachers put wool over their eyes for her. It only took one guilty face to make it clean away again. Yeah. And that was it. No one would say a word. She... I keep getting achievements and I don't know what they mean. She changed boyfriends like socks, but some of them got lucky to ma. Ah, you got me. Really? Really? You gotta use fucking Solid Snake sound effect in a fucking visual novel that's not even related to that. It's fucking Russian. You gotta... Aff really? 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 What? I didn't. Shush, runt. Also, there was a couple in the camp. They were so deep in love that they couldn't live apart. Every spare moment they had, they spent together. When the Belle had found out about them, she was looking to steal the boyfriend. Oh, this voice is hurting, but I'm going to push on. But she was waiting for the right moment, and it just so happened to be the dance party in the camp. Yana was dressed in a satin dress as dark as the moonless night and high heels. She decorated her braid with a scarlet bow. Everyone made a way for her. All the boys wanted to dance with her, but she was way out of their league. The time of Lady's Choice Dance had come, and she asked him for the dance, and then she just seduced him. He couldn't resist her, so Yana snatched him up. But his girlfriend followed them, and then she found Ma. Found them Ma. Well, you got me. I didn't. Making out? You! Shut up, you all. And that's how it was. The next morning, camp leaders were counting children and found two of them missing. The two were the girl and her boyfriend. They were looking for them, and they found the boy lying in a valley with his bones broken as if he was grasping a, with, grasped with a gigantic hand. And the girl was found too, hung on the tree. There was a note under the tree, but what was written in it was kept a secret. Chaos reigned in the camp. Neither the police, nor the ambulance, nor the fire department could make any sense of what happened. But I thought... Ouch! Stop hitting me, Vera! Shut up already. Oh, what happened to the pretty girl? Ouch! Shh! And then, children were disappearing. They were found in the forest, found suffocated in an ice machine. Fuck you! Found dead, either suffocated to death, or with their bones broken. Just the way it happened to the boy. Another strange thing was that before the children died, just like the boy they made... Lisa! You got it, didn't you? The camp leaders were on the watch every night, but children kept on disappearing right from their beds. Scared parents began talking to the children back home. <coughs> Pardon me. The principal had a heart attack. Moreover, the rest of the children stayed up all night hoping to catch the murderer. When the clock counted to twelve, they saw a window swing open and the black veil flew in through it. It grabbed
grabbed the sleeping kid, tied him up, and took him outside. Everything happened so fast that only one boy managed to hit the veil with a stick. After the stolen boy was found dead the next morning, the eldest camp leaders confessed about what it was in the note. There was a curse written in it. The suicide girl cursed the entire camp, but no one believed the curse was real, although they should have. The girl turned out to be a gypsy. The camp leaders had examined the children, and they found a huge bruise on Yana's hand. They then searched her clothes and found that Yana wrapped in found Yana wrapped into it with a black veil. They beat her to death right away and incinerated her body in a huge fire. No one ever went missing again. Ever since then, locals believe that from time to time there's a pretty girl in a black coming to a dance party attempting to seal some girl's boyfriend. And if she succeeds, the boy is never to be found. I would go out with the black veil. What a moron. Who's next? My turn, my turn! Of course. I'm going to tell you the story about the Red Teeth. The Red Teeth, part three. Again? You tell it all the time. Because the story is legit. Mom and Dinny have been in the camp and she saw it with her own eyes. If you have already heard it, why don't you go to bed, huh? Hmm. Tell it, Nasya. Me and Sats have never heard it. It happened a long, long time ago when Auntie Nin 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 yeah. when Auntie Zina was just a girl studying in primary school. It happened. One summer, she went to camp, which was far, far away from home. On one of those days, something terrifying happened there. Someone had stolen all the food from the camp, every single bit of it, including breadcrumbs. The principal went out to go get food at the local city at once, which was far, far away from the camp, while children were left with no food for the rest of the day. Those who had brought some food had to share it with the roommates. Their roommates. But most of them had nothing to eat at all, so they drank more water in order to fool... fool... in order to fool their stomachs. Imagine how big the line to the restroom was. Having no food for a day? Child's play. Easier said than done. Don't interrupt her. Keep going, Nasya. And so, Auntie Zinnia had to go number one, but all the restrooms were occupied. She headed to the nearby bushes. After she sat down, she heard a weird noise, like a duck was chewing on a bone. She sneaked up to the bushes and saw a girl eating something. Auntie Zinnia started at, shouted at the girl, and the girl turned around and she saw the girl. And the, 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 the girl had. <coughs> the red teeth! It turned out that the girl had found a pack of cranberry jelly and wanted to have it all to herself in the bushes. Her nickname was the Red Teeth till the end of the camp. And who stole the food? Oh no! Auntie Zinnia never told. Nice job, Nastya. Quite a scary tale. Who's next? I am, but I must warn you, this story is so scary that I couldn't sleep for a whole month after I heard it. What a wimp. such a playboy in all your other sprites and then what the fuck happened to this one? Anyway, the story is about the Black Hand. The Black Hand, part four. The very same? Precisely. <sighs> Hold on, I think I have plastic somewhere. That's not plastic. Here. That'll do. 
My classmate was there. He saw the black hand. That's racist. <laughs> I'm sorry. And he wouldn't lie about that. Two years ago, my friend David went to a camp. Everything is taking place during a camp. What the fuck? Is that, is that a thing in Russia? Is that just a thing? Because I've never actually been to a camp. I mean, I went to summer camp, but it was held in my school. We, we didn't go outside. We didn't actually do camping. Is this something that happens in Russia? I really need to know this. Anyway. Only the ace students from all over the country could be in the camp. David? Yes. David Schnippelstein. Schne Schnippelstein. Schnippelstein. Do you know him? No. Why didn't you go there? I didn't want to. Not worth much, I see. What? So the camp was surrounded by a tall fence. Guards were on watch 24-7. No intruder had a chance to get in. The adults kept keeping watch outnumbered the children. And all of a sudden, things started going missing in the camp. It was small at first. Badges, candies, pens, and crayons. No one cared because it was normal not to return things amongst geniuses. But then, money, books, even clothes were disappearing. Only then they realized that there was a thief, or maybe a band of thieves working in the camp, Not only, for not only children had been robbed, but adults as well. Guards had been trying to catch the thieves at first, but only they failed and they called the police. But once they failed, they called the police. The police had been staying in the camp for a week, setting up traps, interrogating staff, but to no avail. Meanwhile, the stealing continued. One day, guys from the troop had found a way to reveal the perk. They secretly rigged up a TV camera and set it up in their room. No one else knew it was there. They placed a wallet in front of the camera, hid it in the next room. They hid in the next room and watched the wallet through the TV. They had been waiting for a long time, and they got tired of keeping watch. They got interrupted and missed the moment when the wallet was stolen. It had been there just a moment ago. The next night, they installed a recorder in the room with the camera. In the morning, they placed the video game. Really? 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 In the morning, they placed the video game instead of a wallet and got back to their activities. In the evening, the video game was gone. The recording they were watched showed them a black hand appearing from nowhere, taking the game and then vanishing into the air. The guys ran out looking for adults, leaving one of them to guard the camera. But once the police came back along with the guys recording, it was gone, the camera was broken, and the boy was dead with black fingerprints all over his neck. The police didn't believe the boys, suspecting them as murderers. The boys were arrested and driven into separate, driven to separate rooms. But the next morning, they were found dead. <coughs> yeah, pardon me. With black fingerprints on their neck as well. The entire police department had been assembled on the camp. Scared parents were taking their children back home, while those kids who stayed tried not to be alone. The ceiling didn't stop. Now it was furniture, chairs, shelves, even couches. The Black Hand had gone mad, and it was stealing everything. When a girl went missing, three of her friends from the chemist club got up to take their revenge on the black hat. They built a bomb, planting it in a drawer, and asked David to install a detonator so it would trigger when the drawer was opened. There was nothing to it. All he had to do was... Whatever, what next? In a couple of days, they heard an underground explosion somewhere around the camp. 
ex excavators had been brought. They dug through the foul and found an abandoned bomb shelter stuffed with the stolen things. And in the middle of the explosion, they found a piece of some of the equipment and the boy's body torn apart with the explosion. Identification was hardly possible. His hands were black with paint. The body parts were taken away by the military, as well as the equipment. They promised that no one would ever tell a thing. Ah. What? <laughs> My candies are gone! The Black Hand took them! Relax, Nasia. You ate them yourself while you were listening. Really? I didn't see that coming! Boy, you are noisy. Fine. Now we're going to listen to... Hold on. It's all your snare now. turn now. <sighs> it's my turn to, to pause. To pause. To pause. And end this episode here. Because my throat really hurts and is hurting just to talk. And... I had a bit more range today. That's, that's good. It means I'm getting better, right? <laughs> I just have pain now. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and hopefully we can get back to our regularly scheduled programming soon. And I won't glitch out. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Peace out. Bye-bye.